I'm Marty Stauffer. What slices, dices, shreds and stabs, sips and siphons, hoots and hammers, picks and plucks and preens? Of course, it's the bill of a bird. Bills come in all shapes and sizes, from the delicate sipping straw of the hummingbird to the expandable suitcase this brown pelican carries around on its never-ending search for seafood. Every bird has a bill, which it uses in various ways for transportation, communication, and feeding. But every bill uniquely holds the key to unlocking the secrets of its individual identity. Let's look closer at how the bill makes the bird. Regardless of which came first, the chicken or the egg, at some point in time, every bird must come out of its egg. A wild turkey hen waits patiently. Nature provides a temporary egg tooth, which baby birds need to pip the shell. Hatching time can range from several hours to several days. In time lapse, we see how this wild turkey chick uses its bill to chip the hard outer shell in a circular pattern. It then pushes apart the two halves of the soft inner shell. This exhausted chick has learned one of the many uses of its primary tool. and uses are amazingly numerous. From cracking nuts with a conical bill to sipping nectar with a Tourette bill. From shelling seeds with a delicate bill to stabbing supper with a sturdy bill. Some are fairly familiar. Some are quite exotic. And some, yes some, are lethal weapons. Just like newborn children, some baby birds are completely dependent on their parents for food. Blue jays are one of the most successful general feeders in the bird world. They'll eat just about anything, mostly berries and seeds, but also insects, worms, snails, and even baby birds of other species. Its all-purpose bill is long for plucking, sharp for tearing, and powerful for cracking. Both of these devoted blue jay parents will feed and protect their nestlings. 
While seeds and berries are fine in winter, small animals are more important now. Growing baby birds need this essential source of high protein. Squirrels and birds are the main ingredients in the goshawk's diet. The female can be twice as large as the male. The pair cooperates to raise one fuzzy white chick. All members of the hawk family, which includes eagles, hawks, and kites, have strongly hooked bills, or beaks, with small nostrils located on the upper mandible. This goshawk has no trouble ripping off pieces of meat, skin and all, to feed her chick. The fur or feathers are essential for lining the bird's stomach to protect it from the sharp bones they inevitably ingest. As goshawks are the largest of the accipiters, swift-flying, short-winged hawks, the sharp-shinned hawk is the smallest. This quick little hunter is only about one foot tall. Some believe the red-winged blackbird to be the most common American bird. However, if this sharp shin has anything to say about it, there will be one less. More often than not, the hawk will miss reminding us that it's not easy to be a predator. While virtually all birds of prey catch their quarry with strong, sharp talons, a powerful beak is necessary to tear it into bite-sized pieces. Every bird's bill, comprised of an upper and lower mandible, has evolved to satisfy particular needs. We can accurately assess a bird's lifestyle based solely on the characteristics of its bill. This hawk is a hunter with a hooked, sturdy tool designed for ripping and tearing. While the blackbird has a straight, sharp bill, enabling it to poke, pluck, and select. Predatory birds, because of food scarcity, are often forced to fast for days, especially in winter. This does not seem to adversely affect them. Although this sharp shin may not eat again for a few days, chances are another male red-winged blackbird will move into this territory right away, continuing the cycle of hunter and hunted. Down in the Florida Everglades, different bird bills have evolved. The apple snail is diminishing, and it's the only food of the endangered Everglade kite. At one point, the birds numbered less than 20. Recent estimates are a bit more encouraging, but even at more than 100, its existence still hangs in the balance. Due to development and man-made canals, the apple snail's habitat has been drained and destroyed, thus affecting the population of the kite. A river cooter investigates, but does not have the right tool for the complicated job. 
The kite's perfectly curved beak fits like a key in a lock. Being one of the most specialized feeders in the entire animal kingdom, the Everglades kite will almost certainly suffer as humans encroach on the apple snails and river cooters shrinking habitat. Ornate plumage makes the great blue heron look like king of the wetlands. Standing four feet tall with a seven foot wingspan, this is the largest of our herons and the proud owner of an impressive spear. The Anhinga carries a similar spear as it departs to hunt underwater. As the heron preens, it performs the important task of caring for its feathers. Early in the 20th century, heron numbers were declining due to a market for their beautiful plumage. Now the great blue heron is the most widespread and most well-known of all our wading birds. Preferring the open edge of almost any wetland, a great blue heron will stand in shallow water waiting for its prey. Small fish will usually be caught crosswise, while larger fish will be speared. This immature great blue shows us how breaking the barbs off a catfish allows for easier swallowing. While this youngster seems to be doing fine, some of these beautiful birds have been found choked to death from trying to swallow fish which were too large. Another long-billed resident of the swamp, the limpkin, calls to her young. Some describe this call as chilling, while others talk of its gentle melody. While her brood of five basks in the sun, mother goes hunting for her favorite but not exclusive food. Again, the apple snail. Unlike the Everglade kite, the limpkin does not have a snail-shaped bill. She holds the shell upside down and waits for the snail to emerge. Then, with the flexible tip of her bill, she grabs the snail and pulls it out. Practicing their preening, the chicks are removing dirt and ectoparasites. All birds spend a great deal of time caring for their feathers, preening. It's no wonder. Feathers provide insulation, camouflage, color, and the ability to fly. They are essential for survival. Needless to say, the bird's bill is the perfect tool for the task. A bill is considered long when it is noticeably longer than the bird's head. A long bill can be straight, as in the woodcock. It can be curved, like this white ibis, which probes deep into the sand for its favorite food, mud crabs. Or hooked, as in the cormorant, which dives for its slippery prey. The black skimmer scoops up its meal while skimming the surface. Long bills can be flat, like the roseate spoonbill. This bill shape is called spatulate. A long bill can even be recurved, like the elegant American avocet, which sweeps like a spoonbill and dabbles like a duck.
A long bill can be used for everything from preening to probing, like this sandpiper. Some are sturdy for stabbing, like this colorful Louisiana heron. Others are delicate for sipping, like this Anna's hummingbird. A hummingbird eats three times more calories a day than a person. That's not comparatively, that's 10,000 calories. Its tiny bill is either straight or curved and fits the type of flower it prefers. Bills range from dainty to dramatic. This acorn woodpecker has one of nature's strongest bills. Nesting holes are not their only construction projects. Working in a colony, they also use their bills to create holes in which they store acorns by the score. Wisely, the holes are not drilled deep enough to harm the trees. The stored acorns are eaten from fall to spring. As many as 20,000 acorns have been packed in a giant sycamore tree. Another hard-working bird, which has proven instrumental in the survival of the Rocky Mountain whitebark pine, is the Clark's nutcracker. Not only does the pinching bill of the nutcracker snap up insects, it is quite skilled at reaching in and plucking out the seeds of the white bark. The seeds mature in autumn, but they lack a membrane wing, and with no means of dispersal, they simply fall to the ground. Thanks to the nutcracker, carrying up to 70 of them in a pouch under its tongue, seeds are distributed widely. One nutcracker will transport and store up to 30,000 seeds in a season. Remarkably, it will recover about 70% of them. While these far from forgetful birds often dig up their buried treasure many months later, some seeds remain hidden and sprout future generations of white bark pine. Down south in Louisiana, Young Louisiana herons survey their lush domain. Their neighbor, a roseate spoonbill, is unmistakable with its obviously spoon-shaped bill. Able to feed in salt, brackish, or fresh water, this pretty bird is partial to crustaceans. A sweeping motion is used to stir up the bottom, while tiny nerve endings on the inner edge of the bill are used to feel around for food.
A similar species is the northern shoveler, also sporting a spatula bill. The shoveler's bill has comb-like ridges which act as a strainer when the tongue pushes out unwanted water. The ornate male wood duck and his planer partner have smaller strainers, as do most duck bills. Mergansers, the submarines of the duck family, are adapted for pursuing fish. They have the closest replica of teeth in the bird world. Although they don't use their teeth for chewing, this specific adaptation comes in very handy for gripping slippery seafood. Look closely at this female common merganser and you can see the serrated edge. Without her unique set of pliers, many a minnow would slip away. Also a fisher bird, the white pelican has a bill three times the size of its stomach. Gulls will eat just about anything and have the bill to prove it, but they're no match for a hungry pelican pirate. Fortunately, the gulls are resourceful, and with their all-purpose bill, long for carrying and hooked for tearing, they should have no trouble scrounging up another meal. Hot pink feathers help us identify this exotic bird as the rare American flamingo. Even more unusual is its eccentric, although functional, down-curved bill. Similar, but more specialized than a duck's, the tiny grooves along either side of its bill function as a strainer. Swinging its bill back and forth in shallow water, the flamingo scoops up mud with a pumping action. Water and silt are strained out through the grooves, and what is left are the small animals and plants that make up the flamingo's dinner. In springtime, off the rocky coast of Maine, the male puffin becomes more attractive to females by growing a larger, brighter bill. Plates of red, yellow, and blue grow and thicken in anticipation of a successful season of seduction. Their bill is also used as a tool, a weapon, and for communication pointed up for friendship and down for alarm. Related to penguins, but much better at flying, the puffin spends most of the year out at sea. During the nesting season, these highly skilled divers will catch fish and carry them crosswise in their bill back to their young. With a round tongue and serrated edge, he can carry up to 30 small fish. Summer on the rocky cliff is a cacophony of whistles and chatter, and not only from the gregarious puffin, but also its neighbor, the razorbill. Come September, 
the breeding grounds will be deserted as the colony scatters out over the ocean. Millions of Americans have joined in the ever-increasing pastime of bird watching, or birding. It's not surprising, considering the entertainment value of these natural performers. They're as fun to watch as they are fascinating to study, as varied as they are beautiful. Although many species of birds are thriving, some of our feathered friends are teetering on the brink of extinction. But birders everywhere help scientists to monitor the trends. So keep watching for the rare and the common. Look closely and you just may agree that the bill makes the bird. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, enjoy our wild America.